Barasak Gadadhara Pandit Goshani Dhenu Lakshmi Rupa Tanur Samakehanai Translation Gadadhar Pandit, the fourth branch described as an incarnation of the pleasure potency of Sri Krishna. No one therefore can equal him. In the Gora Gonadesh Tipika Verses 147 to 153, it is stated, The pleasure potence of Sri Krishna, formerly known as Vrindavaneshwari, is now personified in the form of Sri Gadadhar Pandit in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. Sri Sarup Damara Goswami has pointed out that in the shape of Lakshmi, the pleasure potency of Krishna, she was formerly very dear to the Lord as Shamasundar Vallabha. The same Shamasundar Balava was present in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes as Gadadhar Pandit. Formerly, as Lalita Saki, she was also devoted to Srimati Radharani. Thus, Gadadhar Pandit is simultaneously an incarnation of Srimati Radharani and Lalita Saki. In the 12th chapter of this part of the Chaitanya Char Charitamrita, there is a description of the descendants of the succession of Gadadhar Pandit. Om again, Timirandasya, Gena Jena Salakaya, Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Veda Maha, Shri Chaitanya Manobis Tam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam, Bande Ham Shiguro Shiyuta Padakamalam Shigurun Vaishnavam Scha Si Rupam Sagraja Tam Sahaganat Raganat Tam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitam Scha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Brindavaneswari Vrishavanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Mancha Kalpa Tarubis Cha Kripa Sindupa Eva Cha Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namaho Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvishesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Sitarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitana Varunatananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktivindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So to honor the great souls is the business of the Vaishnavas. <clears throat> it's the main business. We honor the Lord, but more important is they honor those who are serving the Lord. Of course, Gadadhar Pandit is of the internal energy of the Lord. Gadadhar Pandit is Srimati Radharani with the element of Lalita Saki, known as Vrindavaneshwari. Uh, that same Radharani who appeared in Krishna's pastimes is now re-manifested in the form of Sri Gadadha Pandit, which is well, the devotional energy. There is the devotee. There is the devotee incarnation. There is the devotee expansion. There is the devotee energy and the devotee pure devotee. Panchatattva makam krishnam. Bhakta Rupa Sarupa Kam, Bhakta Avatar Bhakta Kyam, Namami Bhakti Shakti Kam, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara Srivasati Gaur Bhakta Vindam. Altogether, these five make up the, the complete nature of the Absolute Truth. There's nothing outside of these five. The Absolute Truth consists of all of the aspects of the Absolute Truth, both the incarnations, expansions, energies, and pure devotees, and the Lord himself. Just the Lord himself is not the absolute truth. Absolute truth contains him and his principal energies. Which Gadadhar Pandit is one. He is the uh, internal energy of the Lord for the pleasure potency of the Lord. 
and is manifested directly from the Lord's, uh, what we say, internal energy. Yeah. So Gadadhar Pandit is an interesting personality. Unlike Radharani in her uh, activities in Sri Vrindavan, Gadadhar Pandit has a different mood. We understand Radharani's mood is a little contrary. She is a gopi who sometimes agrees with Krishna and sometimes disagrees with Krishna. Sometimes fights with Krishna and sometimes is having amorous pastimes. Of course, all of these activities performed by Radharani are all for the pleasure of Krishna and are on the highest spiritual platform. But in her manifestation as Gadadhar Pandit, she takes on a different mood. She's gentle, very simple, very humble, and not contrary to Mahaprabhu. Gadadhar Pandit was born a month and a half after Lord Chaitanya of the same year, the year 1486. Just like now is Gadadhar Pandit's appearance day. So if we just, you know, go back about a month and a half, we come to Gaur Purnima, Lord Chaitanya's appearance day. And so the difference is only a month and a half because they were born the same year, or they appeared the same year. Um, Gadadhar Pandit was always with Lord Chaitanya. When Lord Chaitanya went to Gaya, <laughs> in order to meet his spiritual master. And he came back, he was a changed person. Before he was the uh, very arrogant scholar, uh, Nimai Pandit, who would uh, challenge everyone to debates, and no matter what they said, even if it was correct, he would disagree with them. And reestablish another principle, which was uh, what was, which was a higher principle for what they were saying, just like he approached Gadadhar one time and said, Gadadhar Pandit, what is liberation? And Gadadhar Pandit said, liberation means to become free from all material uh, uh, activities. And Lord Chaitanya said, that's very nice, but go home and read your books and come back and give me another definition tomorrow. <laughs> so he would always challenge everyone. When he came back from Gaia, he was a different person. He was very gentle. And now he was talking only about Krishna and devotional service to Krishna. And he used to experience ecstatic symptoms quite often. His mother was a little concerned. She didn't understand what happened to him. And she was thinking he was under the influence of some disease. Um, she thought it was epilepsy. And uh, so she uh, went to different Kavirajas, different doctors, to find out how to help him. Uh, the Lord went along with it, but he was simply experiencing the ecstasy of love of God in different ways. So they would, they would, you know, uh, offer different kinds of formulas in order to uh, try to uh, give him some cure. They said, yes, he has a wind disease, and therefore he needs to be bathed in herbal oils. So they would take the, she would take him and put him in baths of different kinds of herbal oils like that. And then that wouldn't work. <laughs> His ecstasies would continue. So she took him to other Kabi Rajas. One said, he needs to take, take some Shiva Ghee, and you have to make it hot and massage his head with Shiva ghee. <laughs> so one thing after another, and people were saying different things and nothing was working. And so, uh, of course, you know, he didn't have any physical defects. He simply had an ecstatic love of God. <laughs> so one time he went to the house of Suklambar Barmachari. He called many of his associates to be there with him. And they came, Gadadhar Pandit also came and hid in the back room. And Gadadhar Pandit was there. Uh, and the Lord was in Kirtan, and he was exhibiting many of his ecstatic feelings in Kirtan. Uh, the Lord understood Gadadhar Pandit was there, but he could not see him. He said, I know Gadadhar Pandit is here, but where is he? Finally, Gadadhar Pandit comes out, and he falls on the feet of the Lord. 
And he is also in an ecstatic symptom, he faints. The Lord sees Gadadhar, and of course, they have a very close relationship. He said, Gadadhar, you, from your very birth, you were a devotee of the Lord. But look at me. I, after so many years, I wasted simply in scholarship. I didn't take advantage of this human form of life. I wasted my time. But you, you were a devotee even for, from your very birth. So you are so fortunate. So in that way, he would praise Gadadhar Pandit. And uh, so one time, when Lord Chaitanya was going into ecstasy, Sachi Mata was also there. And Gadadhar Pandit said to the Lord, the Lord was crying out, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? I can't find Krishna. Where is Krishna? And he was, so finally Gadadhar Pandit said, well, He's in your heart. He's in your heart. And the Lord thought, oh, I have to see him. So he took his nails and he would start clawing his chest to open up his chest to see the Lord in his heart. Gadadhar immediately understood the danger and grabbed his hands and held it and said, my dear Lord, be patient, be patient. Krishna is coming. Krishna is coming. And that pacified Lord Chaitanya. When Sachi Mata saw that, she said, oh, no one can control my, my Nima except you, so please don't ever leave him. Always stay with him. So Gadadhar Pandit always used to be with the Lord. Ani the Lord uh, took sannyas after many years, and he decided to make his residence Vrindavan. So he was, on, he was going to go to Vrindavan, but on his way to Vrindavan, he stopped at the house of uh, Advaita Charya and Shantipur. And for one month he stayed there, accepting the offerings of all the devotees and having kirtan and discussing Krishna's pastimes in the house of Advaita Charya. Sachi Mata came all the way from Navadweep to be with uh, her son, knowing that soon he was going to leave and she would never see him again. And then while she was there, she insisted no one else should cook for Nima except me. So she was preparing all the, the prasadam for Nima every day, and the Lord was happy. And she was very emotional because she didn't want to lose his separate his association because she had already lost her husband. He had passed on her eldest son, Vishwarup, he had also left earlier, took sannyas and never came back and was no word ever again from him. So now her only son was about to depart. And uh, she pleaded with him. She said, actually, you know, you are going to Vrindavan. We will never see you again. We will never hear about you again. Why don't you please give me one, one promise? He said, what is that, my lord? my mother he said my mother you are you are i have received this body from you therefore this body belongs to you whatever you ask i must i must fulfill that desire so she said oh please live in jagannath puri don't go to vrindavan because jagannath puri and navadweep are two rooms in the same house and therefore we will get to see you every once in a while and hear about you so the Lord considered what she said, and then he changed his mind and didn't go to Vrindavan. He went to Jagannath Puri. So, of course, after coming after coming to Puri from some time, Gadadhar Pandit was in separation from Lord Chaitanya and decided to join Lord Chaitanya in, in Jagannath Puri. So again, they were together. Lord Chaitanya wanted to bless uh, Gadadhar Pandit was a special deity. So there was one particular deity who was a deity in the temple. And there was a temple called Yamesh, Yameshwara Shiva Temple. And in there, there was a deity called Gopinath. Around the temple was a big garden. So the deity got the name Tota, Gopinath. Tota means garden. And so... The Lord told him, you worship uh, Gopinath, make that your deity of worship for your entire life. Gadadhar was pleased to receive that instruction, and he dedicated his whole life to worshiping Gopinath. 
he also decided to take Shetra Sanyas. Shetra Sanyas is where a person vows to stay in a holy place the rest of their life and never leave and save to serve the deity in that holy place. So he took a vow of Shetra Sanyas. After some time, Lord Chaitanya wanted to go to Vrindavan on pilgrimage. And he also wanted to stop in one place called Ramakeli in order to meet Sanatan Bhupa Goswami. And of course, Jiva Goswami was a little boy at the time, and he was also there. So the Lord explained that he was about to go to Vrindavan, and he would be back after a long time. Gadadhar Pandit was really unhappy about that. And he said, uh, I want, if you're going, I also want to go. And Mahaprabhu said, what about your Shetra Sanyas? You have taken the vow. He said, to hell with my Shetra Sanyas. Wherever your lotus feet are, that is Jagannath Puri. Jagannath Puri means whatever, wherever you are. So the Lord was not pleased with that. He said, if you break your vow, people will, will blame me for that. And then he said, no, no, well, actually, I will take all the faults. But actually, you go, and I'm not coming with you. I want to go see Sachimata, so I will go by myself. So Lord Chaitanya left, and Gadahar followed behind. He was following behind. After some time... The Lord stopped at one place. I believe it was uh, Kanai Natashal. And uh, <clears throat> at that point, the Lord became very determined to send Gadadhar back to Jagannath Puri. And again, this time he became a little strong. He said, you know, you're going and you're leaving Gopinath. You're breaking your vow. You make a vow and now you don't keep it. And what will be my, you know, destination? I'm asking you to do this. I have given you this service, and now you're throwing it all away. Gadadhar Pandit didn't want to hear anything. He still wanted to go with the Lord. So at one point, the Lord came to cross. He had to cross one river in one boat. So the Lord got into the boat, turned around. Gadadhar Pandit was on the shore. He said to Gadadhar Pandit, you go back and worship Gopinath. He got into the boat, told the boatman, you know, to sail away. <laughs> well, the boatman sailed away. Gadadhar Pandit fainted, knowing that now the Lord was gone. But uh, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was there and picked up Gadadhar Pandit and said, the Lord loves you. He doesn't want you to break your vow. Just be patient. So the Lord went on, and then he stopped, of course, in Ramakali. He met with Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. That was a wonderful meeting between those two, where he told them, you know, now you are working for the Muslim government. You should free yourself from that association and come, and I have many services for you. So that was a very important meeting with Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. Jiva Goswami was seven years old at the time, and he was also there, and that was the first time he actually got a chance to meet the Lord. Jiva Goswami was the nephew of Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. They had one other brother named Vallabha, who was also known as Anupam, and he was the son of Anupam. So after meeting with them, he was on his way to Vrindavan. Sanatana Goswami Notice, felt that this is not a good time for you to go to Vrindavan. So he said to the Lord, you know, don't go to Vrindavan at this time. It is not a good time. Go at another time. The Lord listened. But then what happened was the Lord continued to go to Vrindavan. But then he got a little ways. And then he realized what Sanatana is saying is right. I will postpone my trip to Vrindavan. And he did. And he turned around and went all the way back. And he went all the way back to Jagannath Puri. He came back after a short time. Everyone was happy to see him back so soon. Gadadhar Pandit, of course, was very happy. 
And uh, the devotees asked, why is it you returned so soon? And the Lord said something very interesting. He said, uh, Krishna would not allow me to go to Vrindavan because I committed offense to Gadadhar Pandit. He said, I hurt the heart of Gadadhar Pandit and therefore Krishna would not allow me to go to Vrindavan. And so he was teaching a particular principle that uh, one should not cause any kind of unhappiness to a devotee, either directly or ind indirectly. Um, devotees are special. Devotees are rare. Devotees have faults, just like well, everyone, but not like everyone, but they also have faults. So that's not so important. What's important is the devotees are always very, very uh, kind to each other and always seek the welfare of each other in devotional service. And so when the Lord said that, and he wanted to make a point that don't cause any discomfort to any devotee at any time. This is Vaishnava. And so now the Lord was back of course, after some time, the Lord, uh, this was actually earlier, I skipped one earlier pastime, where when they were in Navadweep, um, Lord Chaitanya started to call out, Father, Father, oh my Father, Pundarik, oh my Father, Pundarik. And everyone was thinking, who is this Pundarik? We never heard of him. Finally, the Lord said, actually, he is a great devotee, and very soon he will appear in Navadweep. And that's what happened. But Pundarik came in disguised, in the sense that, although he was a great devotee, he looked like an ordinary materialist. He dressed in very lavish and very costly garments. He would wear perfumes. He would comb his hair and put oils and scents in his hair. He would chew betel nut. He looked like a sense enjoyer, but that was just his disguise. Um, he was actually King Vrishabhanu in a previous incarnation, which was the father of Radharani, Taptakanchana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrindavaneswari, Vrishabhanu, Suti Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye. And so Vrishabhanu Suti Devi is the daughter of Vrishabhanu. So he was the father of Radharani when Radharani appeared in, in Ravel back at the time of Krishna's appearance. And so, um, Lord Chaitanya said to Gadadhar, go meet, I mean, he said to Gadadhar, yes, go meet uh, this great devotee, Pundarik, and hear from him. So Mukunda was also there. He said to Mukunda, take Gadadhar and meet uh, Pundarik. So they then, they went to the place where Pundarik was. And Pundarik's place was very much like a palace. Nice bedsteads, beautiful columns, you know, pots and plants all over. Nice decorations. Even servants were running around the home. And so Pundarik came out to greet Gadadhar and Mukunda. And when Mukunda saw Pundarik, he was thinking, Lord Chaitanya sent me to this person. He's a great devotee. He looks like a like an ordinary materialist. He's dressed so gorgeously. He's a great devotee. So Mukunda picked up on Gadadhar's mentality and uh, he he understood he should do something. So he chanted one verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Oh, what was it? What was that verse? Hmm, trying to think. Aho uh, bakiyam kalakala sutam. I can't remember the whole verse, but it's a verse in glorification of Krishna who gave liberation to Putana, although Putana came as an enemy to cause him harm. She had smeared poison on her breast and she offered her breast milk to Krishna. Krishna sucked out the milk and along with the poison and killed Putana. 
but he gave her residence in the spiritual world because she acted like his mother. So when uh, Pundarik Vidyanidhi heard this first glorifying Krishna's mercy upon Putana, he went into ecstasy. He became mad. He started to call out to Krishna in, 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 in ecstasy. And then he went into a trance of devotion and he started to act very unusually. He started calling out and rolling on the ground, calling to Krishna and ripping his clothes and throwing things everywhere. <laughs> Finally, it became Gadadhar's watch and Mukunda under, understands the whole thing. And now the servants come to hold Pundarik and they can't. His ecstasy is so strong. Every time the servants came, they went flying in different directions. <laughs> so now this went on for six full hours. He's in ecstasy. Finally, Pundarik came out of the ecstasy. And then Gadadhar Panda realized, oh my God, I committed an offense. I doubted this great soul. <coughs> So Mukunda said to, to uh, I mean, Gadahar said to Mukunda, I think I would like to take initiation from this person. <laughs> and when Mukunda heard that, he told that to, to Pundarik. Pundarik became very happy. And he said, oh, it is very rare that a, that a person can find a disciple such as Gadahar Pandit. Of course, I will accept him. And so, of course, Gadadhar Pandit is Radharani and Pundarik Vidyanidhi is Prishabhano. So mother, father, father and daughter have become reunited as guru and disciple. <laughs> so when Lord Chaitanya heard that, he was very pleased with Gadadhar Pandit. Of course, later on, back in Jagannath Puri, um, Gadadhar was worshipping his deity very regularly a Gopinath. And uh, it was getting towards the end of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. So, of course, there were many, many wonderful pastimes where Gadadhar Pandit, one time, invited Lord Nityananda to come and take prasadam at his place. And uh, Lord Nityananda had very much, was very happy to come and he had procured this very costly rice, very special, beautiful rice. He offered it to Gadadhar. Gadadhar was so happy that he started to cook the rice. And while he was cooking, Lord Chaitanya also appeared. So the three of them came and they took prasadam together. And Lord Chaitanya said, Oh, this rice cooked by Gadadhar Pandit and offered to Gopinath. Oh, it is the most wonderful experience that one can possibly have. It is coming strictly from the higher realms. This rife is like pure nectar. So he was praising Gadadhar Pandit's cooking. There are many stories how the Lord would come to Gadadhar Pandit and say, I want to hear Bhagavatam. Gadadhar Pandit was very, was very much absorbed in Srimad Bhagavatam. He would read Bhagavatam all the time. So, the Lord said, I want to hear stories about Dhruva Maharaj. I want to hear stories about Prahlad Maharaj. So these were his favorite stories. Even we see his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. He spoke so often about Prahlad Maharaj. Practically, if you, you know, do a little bit of research, you'll find uh, most of his classes were on the prayers of Queen Kunti and the, the prayers of Pallad Maharaj. In fact, Prabhupada in 1977, his last year with us on this planet, he began again uh, giving classes from the ninth chapter of the seventh canto, prayers, prayers by Pallad Maharaj to Lord Nishringadev. So, Lord Chaitanya would love to hear these prayers. So, Gadadhar Pandit would read the whole pastime, and then the Lord would say, read it again. So, Gadadhar would read it again, 
and the Lord would say, read it again. And so he would continually ask him to read it over and over. Vrindavan Das Thakur, who writes this narration in Srimad, uh, what is he? Chaitanya Bhagwat, he says that the Lord would ask up to 100 times to read the pastime, and Gadadhar would read it. And so this was their relationship. After some time, the Lord decided to wind up his pastimes. It was time to leave the planet. There was a big kirtan in the temple of Tota Gopinath, and all the devotees were there, chanting and dancing. At one point, during the, ex the, the height of the kirtan, Lord Chaitanya left the assembly, and he disappeared. Kirtan went on for a few more minutes later, but then everyone stopped and then felt, oh, where is Lord Chaitanya? And they looked around, they couldn't find him anywhere. And everyone at the same time had the same feeling, he is gone. He has left our association for good. And they went all over the temple and couldn't find him anywhere. And the Lord had disappeared from the world. If you go to the temple of Tota Gopinath, the Dopi Gopinath Didi is there. And on the right leg, on the right thigh, is a mark. It looks like a cut, but it's a mark. And it says that Lord Chaitanya merged himself into the body of Gopinath. And he left the world just to show his love for Gadadhar Pandit because Gadadhar Pandit was worshiping Gopinath regularly. So the worship of deity of Gadadhar Pandit became the became the exit by which Lord Chaitanya left the world. It's a very beautiful pastime. And so now the Lord had left. Gadadhar Pandit, when he realized the Lord had left, he became overwhelmed with anxiety. He couldn't live. He didn't want to continue his life on the planet. He wanted to leave also. But somehow or other, just prior to that, Srinivas Acharya had come on the request of Sachi Mata from Navadweep to Gadadhar Pandit to learn Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadadhar Pandit. So Gadadhar Pandit used to try to read and teach from the uh, from his Bhagavatam to Srinivas Acharya. But because he was always in ecstasy when he would read Bhagavatam, he'd cry and his tears would smudge all the ink and he couldn't read the ink. So the Bhagavatam was hard to read. So he took the Bhagavatam and told Srinivas, you go back to Navadweep and you have the scribes redo the Bhagavatam, bring it back and I will then teach you. So this was the time when Lord Chaitanya had left. Now he had promised Srinivas Acharya that he would teach him Bhagavatam. So that's the only thing that kept him alive. He was waiting for the return of Sri Srinivas Acharya. But at the same time, it describes that Gadadhar Pandit was aging one year every day. His body was becoming like an old man, although he was only 48 years old. And... Uh, so um, he continued his worship, waiting for Srinivas Acharya to return. One time, he was about to dress Gopinath. Gopinath is a big deity. He stands very, very tall. And Gadadhar Pandit was trying to put the crown on the head of Gopinath, and he was struggling to reach the head of Gopinath. Something he would normally do, but now because of his separation, his body was becoming weak. And so he was having a difficult time putting the crown on. So Gopinath did something. Gopinath sat down. <laughs> if you go today, you'll see the deity is in a sitting position. He's in a cross-legged position. And so he sat down just to please his devotee. Uh, Gadadhar Pandit. 
Of course, after some time, Gadahar Pandit couldn't bear the separation from the Lord anymore, and he left the world. <clears throat> he stayed for 11 months later, after Lord Chaitanya left. He left in the year 1535, just about 11 months after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya. <clears throat> So Gadadhar Pandit is a very special personality. Um, if you go to the temple in Jagannath Puri, there's a beautiful garden around there. We would go on pilgrimage with the devotees from Chaupati, headed by His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj. And we would always have gatherings in that garden, a big garden. And the devotees would all come and we would sit there and hear pastimes of Lord Chaitanya and Gadadhar Pandit there. <clears throat> we would spend hours there and also take prasadam there. And of course the temple is very beautiful. Inside there's three altars, three separate altars. And one of the altars has the deity of Go Gopinath. <clears throat> Another altar has the deity of, of uh, Lord Balaram. And with his two consorts, Ravati and Kalindi, <laughs> And there is one other altar with another set of Radha Krishna deities there. So it's a big temple. It's, you can have nice kirtan there, spend time in the garden, and to take in the, the whole, the beautiful spiritual atmosphere that is there. If you go to see the deity, the Pujaris will also show you the mark on the leg of the deity where Lord Chaitanya disappeared into that deity. That's oh, very special. <laughs> so these are <clears throat> just a few of the many pastimes of Gadadhar Pandit. So we'll stop here. Uh, thank you very much. Sri Gadadhar Pandit Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. If there's any questions, we can take one or two questions. Comments? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Uh, so if I understood correctly, uh, Gadadhar Pandit is actually uh, two persons in one. It's Radharani with an energy of Lalita. And that's why she's called Vrindavaneshwari. So it's not that they're equally, it's an energy of Lalita, but she is no, he is known as Srimati Radharani. It's interesting because Lord Chaitanya had the mood of Radharani, and Radharani appears as a separate personality in Gadadhar Pandit. Some people say, of course, I heard this. I'm not sure where the the uh, the reference is, but that Gadadhar Pandit, being Radharani, was also helping Lord Chaitanya in his t ecstasy of loving Krishna from the point of view of Srimati Radharani. <laughs> he was like a teacher to Gadadhar Pandit, being Radharani herself. <laughs> I mean, be a, a teacher to Lord Chaitanya. Okay, anything else? Okay, Gadahar Pandit Ki Jai. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.